Hi everybody, Professor Mankowski here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can use context clues and keywords to help us figure out what formula to use in confidence interval questions. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first question here. Uh, pause the video for a couple minutes if you need to to read through. Okay, so how do we handle this? Our clues are that the company seems to be mentioning the word average a couple times. And the way it's mentioned, they're talking about some kind of a average hold time that needs to be maintained for their company. And they wanna find out if they're maintaining that standard. So it looks like they're trying to get us to create an interval estimate for a population average. Our next decision is then going to be right away, where did our standard deviation come from? In the types of questions that we're looking at, if the standard deviation came from a population, then that's letting us know that we're gonna end up using a Z distribution. Let's take a look at the next question. So take a few minutes, uh, read through the video, uh, rather read through the question, pause the video if you need to. In part A, obviously they use the words interval of the true proportion. If they didn't do that though, how would you be able to figure out what to do? Notice that they said 54 people enjoyed soccer more than any other sport. And that sounds kind of like a question you could ask people in the form of a yes or no question. That you could approach people and say, do you enjoy soccer more than any other sport? And they could answer yes or no. So when something like that happens, it's a characteristic of interest. So if you responded, I enjoy soccer more than any other sport, you have that characteristic of interest that a researcher wants to track. And when that happens, that's usually going to be used for a population proportion interval formula. Now, what else can you use to help you figure out that that's the right formula? Well, notice how inside of here, they're not mentioning anything about an average nothing about a standard deviation of any kind or even a variance. So that means of the two formulas we have that use averages and standard deviations, it's probably pretty safe to rule both of those out. We just have to remember that before we use our interval formula for population proportion, we need to have our p hat and our q hat calculated. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next question. Uh, pause the video if you need to read through. Okay, so they're talking about an average distance, and they're interested in measuring something having to do with the average distance that a jellyfish can drift. So it's letting us know that we're gonna be estimating a population average. And we have to decide, again, are we using the Z distribution or the T distribution? When they gave us variance information, notice how that variance is connected to what they told us when they were relaying information about the sample. And that means that the variance is connected to the sample. So that's our clue that we're going to be using the T distribution. And the one thing that you have to watch out for is the formula uses S. It doesn't use S squared, which is the variance. So you have to remember to take the square root of 2.89 when you go into the formula. Let's look at the next question. Okay, so clues in the question. They're using the words minimum sample size. They're using the words within. And if we put both of those together, that means it's a minimum sample size question. So it could be minimum sample size for average or minimum sample size for proportions. Which is it? Well, in the wording, they mentioned that they want us to estimate a population average. So we're gonna end up running the formula minimum sample size for a population average. And remember that when they give you within, the word within is used to give you your error for the formula. Let's look at question number five. For question number five, the keywords are, they're talking about how large a sample should be used. They have within specified again, and they have proportion. So if we put all that together, it means that they want us to estimate a minimum sample size for a proportion. Just remember that when you use your formula, you have to take the error, the 3%, and you have to change that to a decimal for your formula. Now, speaking of formulas, remember, the formula is still gonna require some information about p hat and q hat. How do we get around that if there's none mentioned in the question? Well, that's the part where we're gonna go ahead and assign values of 50% to p hat and q hat each if there's no information given about them already. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the next question. Our keywords in here 
they're asking us about a true mean length of some kind of an animated film. So it means that we're after a population average. Now, they also told us 95% confidence, but all the other information seems to come from when they refer to the sample. All the sample data is present. And that means that everything else we need to work through the formula has to get mined from the sample. And that includes the sample standard deviation. So we're talking about estimating a population average. We're using a sample standard deviation that's letting us know that we're going to end up using our t-distribution formula.